January 24, 2007 was a good day indeed for Arizona's bald eagles. One of our nation's greatest symbols received the assurance of continued protection in Arizona when a broad coalition of public agencies and private businesses signed the Bald Eagle Conservation Agreement. This agreement was signed in anticipation of the Department of Interior's decision to remove the bald eagle from the National Endangered Species List. That decision became final on August 8, 2007, when the bald eagle was officially taken off the list and the management of the birds was turned back over to the states. This document outlines how the department, through its partnerships with the committee, will manage for threats affecting the bald eagle in Arizona. And if we can do that, uh, we'll prevent those threats from happening and, and hopefully see that population grow as we've seen throughout the past years. We have in front of us a special opportunity and special privilege. I am proud to be a committee member. To do what we do, to do what uh, the members and the management team does, I think is, is, is a great effort to preserve what the average citizen can enjoy, not only for today, but also for the future to come. But the bald eagle was not always considered the symbol of strength and courage that we see today, at least not by one famous historical figure. In January of 1784, the elder statesman Benjamin Franklin registered his own disappointment of the bald eagle as our national bird when he stated, the bald eagle is a bird of bad moral character. Like those among men who would live by snaring and robbing, he is generally poor, often very lousy. Fortunately, Ben Franklin's disdain for the bald eagle was not adopted by the Continental Congress. Back in Franklin's day, bald eagles and other wildlife were plentiful in the United States. In the late 1800s, there were about 250,000 bald eagles nationwide, but that number began to decline when they were hunted for trophies and feathers. However, the deadliest threat occurred during post-World War II with the wide use of pesticides. Accumulation of DDT in bald eagles caused the thickness of their eggshells to be so thin they would fracture, resulting in large reproductive losses. By 1963, there were only 417 breeding pairs left in the contiguous United States. Their decline was so apparent due to their national status that it prompted a lot of subsequent actions that spawned today's environmental movement, including the formation of the Environmental Protection Agency in 1972. And its first order of business was to ban DDT. The environmental movement spawned another major milestone when in 1973 uh, the Endangered Species Act was, was passed into law. Under that law, a list of species in danger of extinction, or at least headed that direction, was formed, the falcon, the pelican, the bald eagle, as well as a lot of other charismatic species, gray whales, gray wolf, or the great whales, gray wolf, grizzly bear, were among the early measures, uh, members of this unfortunate club. In the lower 48 today, we estimate there are over 7,000 breeding pairs. They nest in every state but Hawaii. And if you add in the number of eagles that have not yet reached breeding age, you add in the populations in Canada and Alaska, I'm sure we're talking of tens of thousands of bald eagles, which is a pretty remarkable comeback considering we were down to very few. Thirty years ago, there were only 11 nesting pairs of bald eagles in Arizona. Now there are 43. A recovery plan for Arizona's bald eagles was established in 1982 and managed by the Southwestern Bald Eagle Management Committee. Protection efforts include bald eagle survey flights to assess population numbers and nesting activity, banding of adult and immature bald eagles for identification and to track their activity patterns, and closures at state recreation areas during eagle breeding seasons to minimize intrusions on the nesting pair. But probably the single most effective program for protecting these magnificent birds has been Arizona's Nest Watch program. The Nest Watch program has, uh, been, was initially started in 1978 when two Maricopa Audubon Society volunteers actually monitored a nest at Bartlett Lake. Uh, and since then the program has grown and expanded and adopted by the Bald Eagle Management Committee in 1984. 
Uh, since then, uh, the program has, has about 20 individuals we contract every year to monitor 10 to 15 breeding areas around the state. The nest watchers work in pairs and they camp on site so they can keep a constant eye on their charges. If it's the weekend, we're up watching these eagles, what their activities are, what they're bringing in for food, mm -hmm. through the scope from dawn to dusk. If it's during the week, we pretty much walk five, six miles in each direction, mm -hmm. uh, learning the habitat, what they're bringing in, um, and, um, and to see what, what prey they bring in and what parts of the habitat they're using. Jean Carpenter is a nest watcher for a pair of eagles that live along the Lower Verde River and she's been impressed at what good parents the birds are. For the first three weeks of these eaglets' life, they cannot auto-regulate their own heat and cold, mm -hmm. and so they're, so they're particularly vulnerable, and not only the mother, but the father participates, and one of them will always be on the nest, uh, either to brood the, the young while, when it's cold, like in the morning or in the evening, or they'll stand and just put their wings out and shade them when it's really hot. And I think the pinnacle of the success of the bald eagle management in Arizona is our bald eagle nest watch program. Nest watcher duties include data collection on the breeding pair's behavior so land and wildlife agencies can make informed decisions on projects within the breeding area. Public education regarding the sensitive nature of the species during the breeding season and alert the department when a bald eagle is in a life-threatening situation. Since 1984, this program, the Nest Watch program, has helped save 49 nestlings and give them a second chance. This fledgling, along with her sibling, were driven from their nest when they were attacked by a swarm of bees. The young eagles ended up on the ground, but the nest watchers were able to run out and get both birds and send them to the Liberty Wildlife Rehabilitation Facility. Unfortunately, one of the birds was too badly injured to be saved. But the other survived and the people at Liberty Wildlife nursed her back to health and then built up her strength in their flying pen. Flight therapy is uh, something we do with the larger birds. We have a 60-foot flight and especially birds that have never flown in the wild have to show us that they can fly a certain number of, of laps across, around the cage to, to get their endurance up and they you know, we watch to see if they're breathing heavily and we fly them till they, they, they won't go anymore just because we know they need to have that strength. Facing a bald eagle is an intimidating task. It was just, uh, she was particularly ornery and um, some of us who will go unnamed actually did get a little bit intimidated by her because you could get her to fly three or four laps and then she just didn't want to go anymore and she'd stand you off and she could do it. She was, she was a, she had an attitude, which we like. We do like that. After four months of care, she was deemed physically fit, so she was carried to a cliff overlooking the Verde River and set free. On every release, I have a little bit of anxiety. You know, my fear is, did we do our job right? Is she going to fly? And, and this one, you know, I just, I don't know. She had such an attitude. I knew she could go, but I, I will never, ever, ever tire of seeing a release like this, and I've done many of them, and each one seems as thrilling as the last. Fortunately, the bald eagles of Arizona have an umbrella of protection that ensures our national symbol will continue to grow and flourish. Absolutely, we're continuing the same level of management programs and the same level of protection for the species that we've had while they've been listed as endangered species. Um, in their post-listing world. So to us it really doesn't matter whether they're listed or not to the sense that we are going to manage the population the same way we have been um, when they're a listed species. This will always be an intensive managed species. We will never be able to walk away from it to the extent that we can with some other species that just can continue to thrive under benign neglect so to speak while we divert our attention to other species that require it at a much higher level. The bald eagle uh, nesting territories in the state, once upon a time, we would have dared to dream that we might have 20. Through discovery, through recovery, through conservation action among all the partners, we have now exceeded 50. Someday, we might have 60. 